Hello everyone. Like every year, we are back with the series on economic survey. This year, we are going to cover all the relevant aspects of economic survey 22-23 from UPSC perspective. Let me take you back to the previous two economic surveys by the government of India because these two surveys were created in the context of COVID and this is post-COVID. So there is a connection. You see, this was economic survey 2020-21 and this was economic survey 2021-22. Now you can clearly see that there is imprint of COVID there. What was the theme of this economic survey? The theme of this economic survey was saving lives and livelihood. Because the government of India had to make a very difficult choice. We have limited resources. COVID had attacked the economy and society. So government of India had to see which one to prioritize. If you go for lockdown, you can save a lot of lives, but then the livelihood, the jobs, they would be negatively impacted. So the government of India had to take a very difficult decision and balancing act at that time. Now this 2021-22, this was the phase where we were recovering from the damaging impact of COVID. So what was the theme of the economic survey? The theme of the economic survey was agile approach and barbell strategy. Now, what was that? So, for example, guys, if you look at the action by the government of India, they did two things. One, they made sure that the vulnerable section of the society first was given some guarantee through schemes like distribution of food, grains, medicine, etc. On the other hand, the government of India was creating policies for revival of the economy. Those policies were being tested in the context of COVID and the government was not sure about what their impact would be. So when you launch a policy to come out of crisis or a slowdown, you constantly have to see what is their impact on the economy and you constantly have to make changes in that. That is called as agile approach or barbell strategy, where you launch a policy, you take the feedback from the economy and then you relaunch it if required. So this was done here. Now let us look at the current economic survey. This is the latest economic survey, 22-23. Now, this economic survey has been prepared under the guidance of Dr. V. Anant Nageshwaran. He is the chief economic advisor to the government of India. What is the theme of this economic survey? Uh, we don't even need to think too much about it. It's clearly visible. It's G20 here. So in this context, this economic survey has been created. But there is one more underlying theme which you can see across all the topics of economic survey. India has entered Amrit Kal. Now we are talking about the current theme of the economic survey. What is this Amrit Kal? You see, we got independence in 1947. In 2022, we entered the 75th year of our independence. In next 25 years, we will complete 100 years of independence, the centenary. This is what the government calls as Amrit Kal. Amrit Kal means this last 25 years where the government of India wants to transform the India, Indian economy, society and project us as global leader sort of. So this is Amrit Kal, which means it requires new strategy and new reforms and focus. Now, second is India's presidency of G20 nations. So India has got the presidency. Uh, from December 22 to November 30th, 2023. This is our presidency time. So you can see these are the two underlying philosophies in the current economic survey. The first is Azadi Kamrit Mahotsav because we have 25 years to make progress and reach where we want to reach. And then we have G20 uh, president which uh, is giving us, us an opportunity to project ourselves as you know global pioneers and solution givers to some of the global problems. Now, <clears throat> this is what I was talking about, see. So what has the government of India done? The first is Amrit Kal. Government of India is developing strategies. And in the economic survey, government has mentioned what we are going to do in these 25 years to make sure that we develop and progress in different aspects. Now look at this, India's G20 presidency. So what is G20? So see, G20 consists of 19 countries and, and one group called as European Union. So 19, 19 plus 1, 20. G20 was created in 1999. It was established in 1999 because of Asian financial crisis where the finance ministers and the central bank uh, governors, they used to meet and they used to discuss the monetary and financial policies. It was established in 1999. But in 2007, eight, the world faced global financial crisis. So this G20 was upgraded 
and earlier who were meeting the finance ministers and uh, the central bank governors. Now head of the states started to meet from 2007-8 onwards. And, and, and from 2009, G20 has become uh, an international premier uh, institution sort of. So <clears throat> India is saying that it's a unique opportunity for us. So India has given a theme to, to the G20 presidency that India is having. The theme that we have provided is Vasudeva Kutumbakam. This is our theme which we have given to G20 under our presidentship. Now, what are we trying to say? Through Vasudeva Kutumbakam, we are trying to say that this is one earth, one family, one future. And India is saying that, see, global problems require global solutions. And to provide global solutions, we need collaboration and cooperation. What are the global, global problems that we are talking about? For example, uh, you know, global sustainable development targets, environmental concerns, global financial positions, the global debt and the crisis that happens very often across the world. These are some of the global concerns. And India is saying that we need to collaborate and cooperate to provide solution to these global problems. So see, uh, this is uh, G20 19 plus 1. European Union 20 members. You see G20 is a special. Why? Because it covers 85% of global GDP, more than 75% of global trade and more than two third of world population. It's a huge group of countries. Now see what has India done? India has invited some special guest countries in the G20 presidentship that India has, which are these countries Bangladesh, Egypt, Mauritius, Netherlands, Nigeria, Oman, Singapore, Spain and UAE. Now, in G20, some international organizations have also been invited and there's a list of these international organizations, right? So we just need to keep a track of these things because from exam perspective, it might be important. Now, what are the highlights of this year's economic survey? Every year, the economic survey highlights a few things. What are this year's economic survey highlight? So for example, the current year economic survey presents a report card on the Indian economy. Report card of which year? 2022-23. That report card is being presented. Now, <clears throat> this economic survey tells us something very interesting in a very bold manner. In fact, in the very first topic itself, first chapter of economic survey says, India has fully recovered from COVID shock. That's a very bold statement to make because now government of India has said we have fully recovered. So entire world and people of India are going to judge the government that since we have fully recovered, what are you doing to make the economy more progressive? So it's a very bold statement. Now, this economic survey mentions all reforms of last eight years in detail. That's the beautiful thing mentioned in the survey. So those of us who are preparing for competitive exams like UPSC, it's a ready-made content for us because we have all the programs and reforms of the government mentioned in great details here. For example, capital expenditure, programs like national infrastructure pipeline, programs like digital economy, all these things have been mentioned in great detail and how they have helped India. Now, India enters its Amrit Kal. I told you in 2023, we entered the 75th year of independence. So this economic survey says, what do we need to do in the next 25 years to make sure that India progresses in the right direction? Now, there is something which I wanted to show here. So see, this is economic survey 2021-22. Uh, this was topic number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. If you look at this topic number 10, it says social infrastructure and employment. This is topic number 10. This is last year's economic survey. This year's economic survey has promoted this topic and it has gone up, right? And there is one more topic called industry and infrastructure. This is last year's economic survey where industry and infrastructure are together. This, this year's economic survey has separated industry and infrastructure. Two changes have been made. One, infrastructure has been promoted social infrastructure rather social reforms have been promoted and second industry and infrastructure have been separated so let me show you this year's economic survey see this is the current year's economic survey it says chapter number c one two three four five and six chapter number six says social infrastructure and employment so it has been promoted from number 10 to number six 
and if you look at industry that's a separate topic and look at topic number 12 it says physical and digital infrastructure lifting potential growth you see infrastructure is the foundation of the economy without infrastructure economic growth and development is not possible so government of india has paid full attention to uh, infrastructure and this year we have 12 chapters in economic survey last year we had 11 now <clears throat> this 12th chapter is infrastructure which talks about two things government of india says first we have to expand the infrastructure right and second we have to modernize the infrastructure so digital technology innovation these things research and development getting new types of you know financing models investment models in the field of infrastructure is the current focus Based on these realities of the current economic survey, we will start off our series on economic survey very soon. Thank you.